This is just one of the factors sleeping on the back. Many others, of course, participate in our breathing. Let's say we, if we have stress, if we get maybe too tense, too angry, emotions. So there is uh, any strong emotion, as Buteyko was, uh, as Buteyko found, would cause us to hyperventilate. Another factor would be uh, overeating. Any person who exercises and participates in sports, sport contest, of course, is well aware that if the person eats a little bit too much before important competition or test, sport contest, it would be horrible sport result always, because food would be in the stomach. Even if food would be digested before the meal, before the exercise, uh, it still would be, the performance would be severely affected, would never be good. So professional athletes, in fact, try to eat very little even. Uh, maybe just to drink fluids or something which is easy, easy to digest, uh, eating a lot of meat, a lot of fatty food. Nutritional deficiencies, posture, abnormal posture also makes us to hyperventilate because modern people, as we can easily notice, up to 90%, 95%, they slouch a lot if we go to universities, schools, colleges, libraries, how people sit, like sometimes there are 50, 70, 100 people. And maybe out of 100, only one or two sitting with straight spine, which is, of course, crucial for breathing for health, because when we slouch, diaphragm cannot move, and that com uh, compromises gas exchange. You see, when diaphragm moves like a piston in car engine, that, so it makes a feeling of a alveoli and lungs homogeneous when my diaphragm moves down. Alveoli, we all of them stretched in one direction, so we all get fresh air. But when I slouch, I sit down like this, my diaphragm cannot move, I start to breathe using chest, and then instead of getting fresh air supply homogeneous gas exchange for all parts of the lungs, only upper parts of my lungs get fresh air supply, there is gas exchange, but lower parts would not get much fresh air because the diaphragm get immobile. But in modern people, if we observe it, up to about 80-90% of modern people, like if you look at them, you would realize that we are breathing using chest. It usually takes like 10-15 seconds to see like a few breaths and chest is rising. If chest is moving, people breathe at least twice the norm, two times more than the norm. And medical research, I have another chart from the website, which maybe I can show quickly. Tell us about how much was changes in breathing during last about 100 years. So we can see here that long time ago, 1929, this is a very old study, people were breathing 4.9 liters per minute, like studies of many people, about 50 or 100 people. 39, 39 studies, we show very small numbers, even less than the norm, people were breathing. These are already 60s, 80s, 90s, and he, these bars represent several studies because there are a lot of modern studies, many, many, like each bar about five, six, seven studies. You can all together, there are 24 studies summarized, so I put like average, and we can see right away that uh, from 90s on, people, just healthy, ordinary people, breathe twice more than the norm. So people breathe heavier, but if we measure oxygen level, it's less. Oxygen in the body is less. That means, of course, people would be more prone to fatigue. They would be complaining about fatigue because oxygenation, when it's again in the body less, uh, people in, start to invent excuses because in the past people have to enjoy physical activities. It should be like kind of a pleasure for us to do. And uh, what Dr. Buteyka observed and his doctor commented on that uh, when sick patients uh, slow down their breathing and their body oxygenation is improved, we start to crave physical activity. Because for sick people, again, normal breath holding time, 15 seconds, 10, 20 seconds, like much less than the norm. But uh, at the same time, of course, most of them, like virtually all people with heart disease, most asthmatics, people with cancer, other conditions, we would complain about fatigue, that we are tired all the time. Well, because breathing is heavy. So if they have 50, 60 seconds, People would tell totally opposite. They would tell that we are full of energy. We want like to move something physically, and the physical activity does not require any psychological efforts. So uh, this also explains, as Russian doctor believe, why during the last hundred years we had such a dramatic shift again, like so that modern people breathe much more. What was the cause? Uh, we say, and it makes of course sense due to uh, our knowledge of history, that hundred years ago we had much more physical labor. Because it was just at the beginning of industrial revolution. We did not have many machines, cars, and uh, people were exercising physically a lot, up to five, six, eight, maybe ten hours per day. Like moving, walking, doing some physical. As soon as body is moving and the person is breathing through the nose all the time, physical exercise is beneficial for health. In fact, what Boutique and his colleagues found that 
people, uh, let's say patients with asthma and heart disease, they often experience acute episodes of their diseases. For example, it's a very well-known term, exercise-induced asthma attack. Why it's called so? Because when asthmatics try to exercise, they start to breathe through the mouth, it irritates their ways, and they feel much worse. We need maybe to take Ventolin or another bronchodilator. But if we breathe only through the nose during exercise, we never get this problem. So we're much, much more safer. Heart patients totally the same. There are dozens, maybe hundreds of cases when heart patients can die during running, for example, trying to run marathon. We think that it would improve their health, but we breathe through the mouth, and that causes dramatic CO2 losses, causes constriction of blood vessels, so the heart tissue get less oxygen supply, and heart attack, in fact, like angina pain during heart attack, caused by one factor, which is like known medical fact, low level of oxygen in the heart muscle. Like if I right now somehow create low oxygen in the person, uh, low oxygen content in the heart muscle, the person would experience angina pain, anybody. So when a heart patients start to exercise and their breathing is unproportionately heavy in relation to exercise, this is, would be the case, we lose more CO2 because of CO2 losses, the arteries leading to the heart constrict, oxygenation of the heart dramatically reduce, so we can experience pain and we can even die just because of the attempt to run. But when it's done through nasal breathing, again, it's totally safe. Although, as I told before, sick people usually are not able to exercise rigorously, vigorously with uh, nasal breathing only. But what we can do, we can walk. And this is what Hippocrates, like the father of medicine, wrote two and a half thousand years ago, that walking is the best medicine. And this is how also Dr. Butek and his colleagues teach sick people that sick people should exercise, but 100% of time with nasal breathing in and out.